It's always great to be the speaker right after lunch. Let's see if we can keep you all awake for a while. Uh, first of all, it's great to be out west here. Uh, as they mentioned to you, some of you all who are the heroes of past wars in the Pentagon know that any day away from Washington is a good day. So I'm sure our congressman here might testif testify to that. But we won't make you vote on that, congressman. First of all, welcome to the Congressman Cook. Sir, it's great to have you here. And your mayor from Barstow, great to see her here. Thanks for taking the time to come out for this trip. Uh, special thanks to General Martin and his team here at Fort Irwin. You got a great garrison crew. I mean, you can't go wrong when you got an Airborne Ranger Garrison Commander and then you got an Airborne Ranger Chaplain. I mean, it just don't get any better than that. And Sergeant Major Esmuri has been a great help for us. Uh, we've been talking to him over the telephone back and forth to help set this up today for you guys. But they've done all the heavy lifting. We just get to come out and talk to you for a while. A special mention to Colonel Retired Fritz, your Medal of Honor recipient. Had a chance to sit next to him last night for dinner and hear some of his stories. What a, what a wonderful role model for Americans, and we just don't use them enough. But it's just great to see him representing the rest of the crew here and certainly representing your regiment. And we need to pay, pay particular, I say particular thanks to Miss Renita Wicks. And that's her right back there. <laughs> Renita! Renita! There you go. That's the lady with the mojo. And a special thanks to all the soldiers who are here today. There's one at each table. Uh, you guys don't know it, you guys and gals, you don't know it, but you represent the future of our country. And it's great to see you out here, uh, getting a chance to rub shoulders with some of these folks that uh, did their duty years ago. And I hope you're learning from them and taking some of their messages to heart. So it's good to see you all. The last time I was at Fort Irwin, I was out in the desert getting my butt kicked across the sands here by the hated Op 4. And, uh, It, it was a learning experience. <laughs> Actually, it was. It was a great experience. And uh, it's, it's really interesting to see the change in the, uh, the community here. The installation back then had a Burger King and a front gate. <laughs> and that was about it. <laughs> and uh, and it's got, you've grown. You guys have done a good job here. You've really done well. But I'd like to thank you all for letting us come out and share this event with you. Uh, it's really important for us to do that and to help our country recognize our Vietnam veterans and their families. And also having an opportunity to recognize the unique and, and very important history of the 11th Cav. It's a great outfit and you all should be proud of it. Uh, as you heard by, absolutely, clap for your regiment. As you heard from my introduction, I'm part of a team now that's helping to execute the plan that uh, Congress asked us to put together and to reach out across this country during our commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. Now, we're not necessarily commemorating the war. What we're trying to do is reach out and to thank those who served and did their duty back then. You all know better than the rest of us the chores and the difficulties you faced. But back in 2012, when we kicked this off at the wall, we had several people down there to include the entire chain of command. And we invited the Vietnam veterans back as the VIPs. And they had several hundreds of them there, and it was a great event. 
Uh, at this event, we were reminded by some of the speakers there that soldiers don't start wars, but soldiers are necessary to conclude them and to fight them. And we were also told that most of those who served in Vietnam did so with great valor and honor, something that if you just listen to the press releases and the television accounts and news reports coming out of that era, you would not know that. But as with most large endeavors, mistakes were made, but we must not tarnish the service of the many by the misdeeds of the few. Unlike previous wars and the most recent ones in Afghanistan and Iraq, our Vietnam veterans did not return home to a grateful nation. Their return home was not marked with welcome home parades and formal recognition ceremonies. Their families endured the hardship of separation and in many cases the loss of loved ones without the support of their communities and nation. Our wounded returned home with injuries and scars that were theirs alone and they dealt with them without the popular outpouring of support that we see today constantly going on on the news and in the advertisements we see on television. In fact, many Vietnam veterans returned home to criticism, in some cases outright scorn. While Vietnam was a long war, we also expect to have a relatively long commemoration period. We're going to go out to 2025 to try and reach as many veterans as possible across the country. By our estimate, we think there are about 7 million of you out there right now that need to be reached, touched, hand shook, and basically told thank you from a grateful nation, along with their families. While our office is focused right now on the Vietnam veterans, we like to take some time everywhere we go to reach out to all the other veterans in the audience. Those of you who served at other times and other places, World War II, Korea, and even local or the, the newer ones also. Your service has made a difference in our country, our lives, and our children. We thank you for your service. Our military served for six presidents, six different presidents during their time in Vietnam. President Truman started off by providing some advisors to the French, and, General, and President Ford was in office at the conclusion of 1975. As was mentioned earlier, there are a little over 58,000 names on the wall in uh, Washington, D.C., basically recognizing those who were killed in action. Somewhere around 75,000 were disabled. We still have well over 1,600 missing in action that are unaccounted for. Of the 7,000, nearly 500 women who served in Vietnam, eight of them died. They were all nurses. The average age of those killed was about 23 years old. These facts and many more like them are important because they provide us some context to those names we see on the wall in D.C. They help us to understand the true cost of wars not measured in dollars and cents, but in lives. Real people who do not come home, and those that do come home, come home with scars that need mending and extensive care. These facts are best understood by you, our veterans. They represent people who serve and served honorably. Some have come home and continued to contribute in this country as citizens. Some never had a chance to grow up, to have families, to have children, to have grandchildren. But they all had some things in common. They all had families, and they all had loved ones who cared for them. Each had hopes and dreams for their futures, a future that for some was cut drastically short. All of those who did come home were profoundly affected by their experiences all because they chose to honor the call of their nation. Our nation in the past has paid special recognition to conflicts at their 50th anniversary. We started with World War II and Korea. It's time now for Vietnam, which has come of age. And it's time for us as a nation to step up and accomplish something that should have been done years ago. 
to welcome home our Vietnam veterans and offer them the thanks from a grateful nation for their sacrifices and their service. Not only was your service in Vietnam noteworthy, but veterans of the war continued to contribute by the way of mentoring, leading, training, and building plans for the future leaders that were for the future leaders that were to come here to serve in our army. Today's army was built by Vietnam veterans. You had a significant impact. Their plans and execution led to successes like Panama, Desert Storm, Bosnia, and others. Leaders such as Abrams, Starry, Crozen, Depew, Saint, Franks, and Patton were all there when they were needed to rebuild the army and to establish standards that would ensure success in the future conflicts. Each of these leaders transcended their particular units and become, became transformational figures for our army. And of course, many of them are directly tied to the 11th Cav. In order to reach out and connect with as many veterans of those 7 million we talked about as possible, we have enlisted the help of communities across the country, organization companies, military units, cities, towns, and states. Across the country, we now, now have over 7,500 commemorative partners, and each are connecting with veterans in their hometowns and helping us thank, thank them where they live and work. Our goal is to reach as many veterans, as I mentioned, by the end of 2025 via commemorative events just like this one here. So you all are doing a great job making a great start for us. The task at hand is a significant one, and we need all the help we can get. Joining is easy. It can be done. Reach out, find your, your organizations back in your communities, and talk to them and tell them, tell them you've got some advice and some ways they can reach out and help veterans. All they got to do is go visit our website, www.vietnamwar50th.com, and you can find out. In all honesty, I'm going to say this, you may not believe me, but this is one thing your government's going to give you for free. You can join and do this for free. All we ask you to do, if you join as a commemorative partner, is conduct two events a year to recognize veterans. Not hard to do. So once again, it's an honor to be here with you today, and it's just a great cause, and it's something we should all look forward to doing every day, and that's to reach out and thank our veterans. Thank you for being here. It's great to see this group. You all are a wonderful, wonderful outfit. Thank you very much. Arrived, they made their way to the fest tent, where they received a standing ovation by installation senior leadership, soldiers, and community members. Because Installation leadership kicked off the ceremony with comments. The soldiers that I redeployed with, and I redeployed yeah, four times, thing. and every time I was treated like a rock star. And the reason is, is because of the.